This is the most important moment in the process of creating a South Sea Pole. The moment when Harry inserts the nucleus into an oyster around which a pearl will form. And if he's imprecise, the resulting pearl may come out misshapen. The goal is this, a near-perfect round pearl with a large 20 mm diameter. That's more than twice the size of the more common Akoya pearl. And this single pearl can sell for $1,500, compared to $75 for a high-grade Akoya pearl. A necklace of near-perfect South Sea pearls can cost over $200,000. So why is making these pearls so much more difficult? And what makes them so expensive? South Sea refers to the southern portion of the Pacific Ocean. In these waters, just off the coast of Lombok, Indonesia, pearl farms like Afdol Pearl are growing cultured pearls. These are pearls that require a human to put something inside an oyster instead of harvesting naturally occurring pearls. And South Sea pearls are the most expensive variety of cultured pearls. That's in part because of how long it takes to make a South Sea pearl. While some freshwater oysters can churn out dozens of smaller pearls within three months, it takes about five years to cultivate a single South Sea pearl. The oyster it comes from, the Pinctada maxima, can only make one at a time. And only a fourth of these oysters survive cultivation. That's why the pearl farmers have to go to great lengths to keep the oysters alive. It starts in this highly controlled laboratory, where lab technicians must create the perfect conditions for oyster larvae to grow into healthy, pearl-producing adults. They have to maintain a room temperature of exactly 20 degrees Celsius and feed the larvae the phytoplankton they need to grow. To do this, they combine salt water from the South Sea and sodium hydroxide and store it for five days until there's enough plankton. Lab techs feed the plankton to nets of baby oysters and monitor their growth for about 45 days. That's around the time they reach at least one millimetre in diameter and are old enough to be transferred to sea. The oysters are transferred to save on the costs of rearing bigger oysters, which can get expensive. Ya, kalau pelihara di darat harus kita bikin planktonnya. Kita beli plankton, kita bikin. Itu biayanya agak besar dia. In the South Sea, the oysters get the warm waters and food they need to mature. But this is also where most of them will die without producing a single pearl. Itu yang akan hidup nanti cuman 25.000 dari 10.000 itu. Eh, 2.500 maksudnya. Karena 75% itu dia pasti meninggal. That's why pearl farmers have to check on the oysters monthly to ensure they're still growing, eating and healthy. They pull the nets of oysters up from the sea and clean the shells. This helps prevent predators from feeding off the oysters and eventually killing them. Ya agar ini kadang kalau kerangnya kotor kan ketutup semua. Jadi susah untuk makan. Di sini banyak lumut, banyak kotoran, banyak bakteri juga. Ada ulat di sini. Kadang-kadang itu yang bisa bikin mutiara jelek. Jadi tujuannya juga untuk kita bangunkan. Kadang-kadang kerang tidak mau bangun. After up to two years of nursing, when the oysters are large enough, implantation can begin. For cultured pearls, implantation is the most important step. When a nucleus is implanted, the oyster sees it as an irritant and reacts by building protective layers of nacre around it. This becomes the pearl. Harry is demonstrating where the nucleus is implanted on an opened oyster. Nah, terus yang ini, ini inti namanya. Jadi sebelum masukkan ini terbuat dari kulit kerangnya. He tears the oyster's gonads and injects the nucleus in the middle. He then adds cybo under the nucleus. Cybo is a mantle tissue cut from another oyster that surrounds the implanted nucleus. 
It's essential to the pearl quality, and without it, the oyster won't produce any pearls at all. Harry is the only person Aftol trusts with this step. That's because the nuclei don't come cheap. Mahmoud buys the nuclei from Japan, and their cost, in addition to import taxes, takes 20% of his profits. And he says getting import permits for these nuclei is difficult, preventing him from buying enough to expand his business. After the nucleus is implanted, special attention is paid to how the nacre grows around it to avoid a misshapen pearl. They're working towards a large, almost perfectly round pearl. Workers invert the oysters and put them in their protective nets to bring back to sea. The South Sea pearls are unique soft, satiny luster and thick nacre are a result of the warm waters it grows in. And a thick nacre means a large pearl. Harry says they must flip them regularly so the nacre grows evenly. Jadi itu tidak boleh terlewatkan dia. Selama 40 hari itu ada schedule-nya. Kita bikin schedule untuk 3 hari. Satu minggu setelah suntik, kita biarkan setelah lubang yang kita robek itu nutup, baru kita bolak-balik. After 40 days, workers remove the oysters from the sea and clean them weekly. Harry checks the implanted oysters monthly to see how the pearl is developing. This is done for up to two years before the first pearl can be harvested. Untuk tiga tahun pertama itu minimal size-nya dari 0,9 atau 0,8 gram atau bisa dikatakan 7 sampai 11 mm itu tahap yang pertama tiga tahun pertama itu bijinya itu 1,3 gram lah minimal 0,8 lah ya. Harry implants the same oyster two more times. Each time the pearl after all harvests is bigger. By the third harvest, the pearl can reach over 20 millimeters in diameter and over 8 grams in weight. But as much as pearl farmers like Mahmoud invest in the intense care needed to raise the oysters, the outcome is never guaranteed. Mahmoud says only 20% of the oysters that survive make the most valuable kind of pearl, almost perfectly round, lustrous and large. Mahmoud grades the pearls based on size, luster, shape and color. The larger, rounder, shinier, minimally blemished pearls get the highest grade. That can be triple A or quadruple A, depending on the producer. Mahmoud then sells them to jewelers, like Rihanna Melia, who fashions the pearls into necklaces, earrings, and rings. Rihanna seeks out the highest grade she can find, but it isn't easy. Sangat sulit ditemukan untuk yang bagus. Saya juga kadang-kadang dalam satu hari itu Ini dalam sekarang ini saya minim uh, stok material. Lower grades are more available, but they're rougher, asymmetrical, and lack shine. And in the jewelry world, those are the least desirable. But even the highest grade pearls are not perfectly round. That's because even though they're farmed, they're still natural pearls. So finding a near perfect pearl, let alone enough to make a string necklace, is extremely rare. It took nine years for Rihanna to find enough AAA grade pearls to make this necklace. She is finally able to sell it this year for $36,000 to a local buyer. That makes sourcing these expensive pearls worth it for Rihanna, who relies on farmers to continue to produce high quality pearls. But Mahmoud says pearl farmers need more support from the government specifically around making nuclei readily available. Kalau untuk itu sih memang iya. Kami bisa apa? Tidak bisa pungkiri ya. Bahwa untuk perizinan import ini yang agak sulit. With this kind of support, pearl farmers say they could increase their production and make Indonesian South Sea pearls more readily available internationally. <laughs>